Hi everybody, my name is Danny Stewart and I am a musician and so happy to be talking to you today about music and some of the secrets behind music making. I'm very lucky, I've been a musician my whole life and music is just the best way to express yourself and to learn about the world. So I wanna tell you a little bit about my own instrument. First of all, this is a viola. It's like a violin, but it's bigger and it sounds deeper. So it's also kind of like a cello, except it's smaller and sounds lighter. So it's right in between and the notes sound like this. So those notes are C, G, D and A. And when I plucked it like that, that's what you got. But now I'll play it with this, which is called a bow. And when I play the viola with this, it sounds like this. I'm going to demonstrate now how different an instrument can sound, depending on what type of mood you want to express. So it can say something very playful from this music from almost 300 years ago. Or I could say something, I don't know, kind of cool and really fun and jazzy. Or maybe I wanted to say something like uh, a dance, like fiddle music. Yeehaw! And, you know, say I wanted to say something angry. Well, here's some more music from almost 300 years ago. Amazing, right? And of course, we have musical favorites from movies. Or from the radio. And of course, we have songs that we love to dance to. I know you like that song. Even though that's not written for the viola, again, any instrument can pick it up and play it and have a lot of fun with it. So I encourage you to try different instruments and see what suits you. Because like in Harry Potter, you know, they say the wand chooses the wizard. Well there's going to be some instrument that really speaks to you. And it's fun to find out more about that and see how much fun you have exploring. We also have music that we dream to or we express different kinds of emotions, very special personal emotions. Maybe something like this. So now I want to tell you a little more about the difference between solo music and chamber music and orchestra music. I'm going to show you a wonderful piece by a composer called Brahms, Johannes Brahms. And this is a score. And a score is like a book. It literally shows you the notes that we play, kind of like a book shows you the words that we read and then the sentences we understand and the stories that come out of that. Well, these notes, one by one by one by one by one by one, each represent a sound and how to play it. And in this case, we have five different instruments playing at once. You can see one, two, three, four, five different instruments. And they play like this, one, two, three, one, two, 
three. So it shows you not only the notes, but it shows you exactly when and where in time and how fast to play these notes. So this is what that piece sounds like. And there's a lot more of that great music. I need to tell you some more about bigger music now. So this is the score of a very big piece. It's called Carmina Burana. It's written for a big orchestra of about 100 people. And also a chorus, which is a group of many different singers. So here, you know, the last piece had only five lines. Want to guess how many this has? We could count. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There are 27 different lines here. But they represent many more musicians than just 27 because you have here the flutes and the oboes and the clarinets and the bassoons. So that's the woodwind section. And then you have the brass section, which are the French horns, the trumpets, the trombones, the tubas right there. Then you have percussion instruments like the bass drum, the timpani, the cymbals, the triangle. And underneath that, you have the singers. So you have sopranos and altos and tenors and basses. Sopranos and altos are the women singers. They're the high and the low voices of the ladies. And then you have the tenors and the basses, which represent the high and the low voices of the men. Underneath that, we have some piano music right there. This actually requires two pianos. And then these are the strings at the bottom, represented by the violins, the violas, the cellos, and the basses. And keep in mind that one violin section, there are two violin sections in an orchestra. One of them equals, well, about 20 in a usual orchestra. So you can have just 40 violinists. This probably represents about 200 people on average. So let's hear what this incredible piece of music sounds like. Pretty exciting, right? It's my wonderful job as a music director, as a conductor, to help them not only stay exactly in time, precisely with each other, and to show when to stop and to start again, but also to show the character. So I'm gonna give you one good demonstration. There's a wonderful piece of music that we all know and love, all us musicians. It's called the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. It's a big piece for orchestra and chorus, and it talks about joy and how special joy is to all of us and how it unites us and brings us together, makes all of us family. And here is what it sounds like. Freude, schöne Götter, Funken, Tochter aus Illusion. Right? And so I'm showing four beats. And you want to try that with me? Here, go for it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good job. Okay, ready? Three, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. And now I'll show you how I help inspire the energy and the meaning of what it is that the music is expressing through these words. Okay. Freude, schöne Götter, Funken, Tochter aus Elysium. 
And so in that way, I'm really helping to show the flow and the energy and exactly what we're all trying to express at that moment. So there's music for really every occasion and it's very special to get to find the music that really helps you learn more about yourself and learn more about these expressions in general. Music is an incredible way to find out about each other and to share and to appreciate this great beauty that's all around us. Mm -hmm. 